Hello and welcome to Drama Recaps. Today, we're immersing ourselves into the world of The Lovely Bones, a captivating drama film that premiered in 2009. Our journey begins with Susie's voice guiding us through her early childhood years, specifically, a memory from when she was two years old. She recalls her fascination with a snow globe, housing a lonely penguin. Her father, Jack Salmon, reassures her about the safety of the penguin in the controlled environment of the globe. Fast forward 12 years, Susie, now an adolescent, is living a joyful life with her family. The Salmon family, comprising her parents, siblings, and her grandmother, leads a serene life with Jack Salmon working as an accountant. During a family excursion to a large scrapyard, the local repository for discarded items, Susie spots her schoolmate, Ruth, observing them from afar. Rumors about Ruth's mysterious abilities to perceive unseen things have prompted Susie's parents to discourage their friendship. A memorable incident takes place when Susie's younger brother, Buckley, chokes during a playground visit. Despite her inability to drive, Susie rushes him to the hospital, ultimately saving his life. Her quick thinking garners her family's adoration and a prediction from her granny Lynn of a long and content life. Contrary to her grandmother's optimistic belief, Susie tragically loses her life on December 6, 1973. While alive, Susie harbored feelings for a senior boy, Ray. Her grandmother nudges her to disclose her feelings to him, but Susie hesitates due to her lack of confidence in her kissing abilities. As an aspiring wildlife photographer, Susie has an extensive collection of photographs, though most of them are self-portraits or snaps of other people. Her mother, Abigail, expresses her dissatisfaction when Susie exhausts all her film roles. Even though developing these photos would be expensive, her doting father proposes a compromise to develop a role each month. Before heading off to school one day, Abigail gifts Susie a homemade pom-pom hat. Although she is not particularly fond of it, she reluctantly puts it on when she meets her sister, Lindsay. Unbeknownst to them, they are being observed from a window. At school, Susie interacts with Ray, her crush, for the first time. A palpable connection develops between them as Ray compliments Susie's beauty. Their impending first kiss is interrupted by a dispute between Ruth and a teacher over Ruth's nude artwork. However, Ray invites Susie to meet him in the park the following Saturday at 10. Upon leaving school, Susie is brimming with joy, eagerly anticipating her forthcoming date with Ray. As the evening sets in, she takes a detour through a vast cornfield on her way home. She accidentally drops her book, releasing a hidden note from Ray that she hadn't known about. The note is caught by the breeze and is snatched from midair by a figure emerging from the shadows. The man is revealed to be George Harvey, the salmon's mysterious neighbor who has been clandestinely observing Susie. Although he is amiable, Susie remains wary and maintains her distance. Harvey entices her curiosity by inviting her to see his latest creation intended for the enjoyment of the entire neighborhood. Intrigued, Susie follows Harvey to a concealed trapdoor, uncovering a brightly lit clubhouse amidst the cornfield. As Harvey descends into the underground lair, Susie's family gathers for dinner, awaiting her arrival. Abigail, her mother, starts worrying about Susie's delay, while Jack promises to remind Susie about punctuality and caution once she returns. In the underground clubhouse, a sense of trepidation takes hold of Susie, prompting her to excuse herself. Harvey's demeanor abruptly changes, demanding respect towards adults from her. He insists on her staying, assuring her he won't cause harm. However, he proceeds to forcefully offer her a drink. Fearing the worst, Susie tries to escape, but Harvey violently pulls her back. She lands a kick on his face and frantically flees the cornfield. Simultaneously, Ruth finds the note carried away by the wind and witnesses a fearful apparition of Susie. Panicked, Susie rushes through the desolate street and spots her father searching for her. She calls out to him, but to her bewilderment, her voice falls on deaf ears. Rushing back home, Susie hears her mother conversing with the police, but she finds her home empty. She visits Harvey's house and encounters a figure submerged in a bathtub, surrounded by mud-coated items. She spots her charm bracelet on the faucet and as she reaches out to reclaim it, the figure emerges, revealing itself to be Harvey. 
She screams in horror, realizing that she now exists in a liminal space, neither alive on earth nor ascended to heaven. The next day, Susie's mother knitted hat is discovered deeply buried at the crime scene. Fetterman, a detective, arrives to inform Susie's parents about the discovery along with traces of blood, leading Abigail to fear the worst. The horrifying news leaves them distraught, and Jack pledges to bring Susie back, consoling a shattered Abigail. Meanwhile, Harvey hastily eliminates all evidence linking him to Susie's demise by burning her belongings. When Detective Fienerman interrogates Harvey, the latter's casual demeanor doesn't betray his sinister secret. Upon sighting photos of Susie, Harvey realizes that her charm bracelet is still visible on his dollhouse model. Covertly, he hides the bracelet while showcasing his handcrafted house model to Fienerman. In Susie's spectral existence, she sees Ray waiting for her in the park, as he had promised. Running towards him only results in her sinking further into an aqueous abyss. In the corporeal world, Harvey discards Susie's charm bracelet into the sea. Finding herself in a forest, Susie encounters a young girl named Holly, who advises her to release her attachment to the mortal world. Holly reveals to her that they are no longer alive, and nothing can undo their fate. Susie is bewildered and inquires about her current location, to which Holly responds that they are not in heaven yet. She further discloses that she, along with six other girls, were victims of Harvey's murderous rage. Susie learns that her mortal remains are concealed in a large safe in Harvey's basement. Resolute in her quest for justice, Susie vows to make Harvey pay for his heinous acts. In the months that follow, Jack's grief intensifies, and his relentless search for Susie continues. Abigail is mired in guilt and is disheartened when she observes Jack persistently digging, as if searching for Susie. Detective Fienerman urges Jack to focus on his remaining family and let the police handle the investigation. Unconvinced, Jack suspects the killer could be someone from their neighborhood and refuses to abandon his pursuit. The Salmons struggle to come to terms with this devastating incident. One day, while walking their family dog Holiday, Lindsay passes by Harvey's house, where Holiday starts barking incessantly. Harvey steps out, greeting Lindsay nonchalantly and entering his house, leaving Lindsay suspicious. He later ogles Lindsay from his window, indicating that his predatory desires are resurfacing. Stuck in her transitional world, Susie continues her vigil over Harvey, realizing that he is hunting for his next victim. Harvey's voyeuristic tendencies have him spying on couples seeking solitude in the cornfield, his loneliness amplifying in contrast to their intimacy. Amidst all this, Abigail's relationship with Jack and her mother, Lynn, deteriorates as the family crumbles under the weight of their loss. Abigail finally decides to abandon her life, leaving a note for Jack. She takes up work on a farm, sporadically sending updates about the other two children. She intends to move on without Jack and forget Susie. As time passes, Lindsay embarks on a romantic journey with a senior boy. This development, keenly observed by Susie and Holly, invokes a pang of jealousy in Susie, reminding her of the missed opportunity she had with Ray. As time passes, Harvey's attention shifts to Lindsay, whom he begins to see as his next prey. He carefully starts planning his trap, considering all possibilities to ensnare Lindsay. Jack, still determined to uncover the truth about Susie's disappearance, stumbles upon a telling clue in one of Susie's final photos. The image shows a flower, with Harvey's figure subtly reflected in it. As Jack stands in his garden, looking at the wilted flowers that Susie had photographed, he notices one bloom suddenly. This miraculous event is visible only to him, a spectral message from Susie pointing towards Harvey as her killer. Jack's suspicions grow stronger when he sees Harvey building a wooden structure outside his house, not realizing that it is intended to be a trap for Lindsay. Despite Jack's convictions, Detective Fienerman dismisses his accusations due to lack of tangible evidence, advising him to move on. Undeterred, Jack decides to confront Harvey directly. Armed with a baseball bat, he follows Harvey to the cornfield, where a misidentification leads to a violent altercation with a couple. Jack is severely beaten and hospitalized, while Susie watches helplessly, lamenting her father's condition. As Susie delves deeper into Harvey's past, she discovers the extent of his atrocities. 
All his victims were young girls, including a six-year-old who was murdered merely for screaming at Harvey's approach. After each murder, Harvey meticulously erased any trace of his crimes and started anew. During this time, Lindsay, taking a cue from her father's suspicions, decides to break into Harvey's house in search of evidence linking him to Susie's murder. While there, she uncovers Harvey's diary, which chronicles his perverse plans and his past victims. In it, Lindsay finds a lock of Susie's hair and a picture of her, which directly implicate Harvey in Susie's murder. Upon hearing Harvey's car approach, Lindsay quickly absconds with the incriminating diary. Harvey senses an intrusion and pursues Lindsay, who manages to escape his grasp and run towards her home. Back home, Lindsay sees Abigail, who has returned to the family after leaving her job. Lindsay informs everyone about the evidence she found in Harvey's house. Meanwhile, Harvey hastily packs his belongings, prepares to flee, and attempts to dispose of the safe containing Susie's remains at a landfill site. In the spectral realm, Susie prepares to ascend to heaven with the other victims. Before she leaves, she inhabits Ruth's body to meet Ray for one final time. Recognizing Susie in Ruth, Ray fulfills her long-held wish to share a kiss with him, giving Susie her first and only romantic encounter. As Susie and Ray share their poignant moment, Harvey dumps the safe into a pit, obscuring it in darkness. He moves to a new town, intending to continue his criminal activities. However, when he approaches a young girl, karma catches up to him. A falling icicle startles Harvey, causing him to lose his balance and fall into a ravine. His body shatters upon impact, and he succumbs to his injuries on the spot. Thus, the story concludes with the poetic justice of Harvey's downfall, brought about by the very karma he tried to escape.